Hello everyone, this is Samir from Audio Search Review, back with another product review. In this case, it's the Shet's uh, new uh, balance headphone amplifier and preamp called the Midgard. Um, you can see a picture of it there and uh, sort of you know, looks just like the picture. Um, it's the back of it. Uh, typical of Shet products, they put the power switch in the back. I like to turn off my headphone amp when I'm not using it, so not a big fan of that. but. You get used to feeling in the back and turning it off. Um, the front controls have nice feel to them. These, uh, there's a gain switch and an input switch between RCA and XLR. Um, they use these symbols, international symbols. I think everybody understands English, so I encourage them to put the word gain on them so you don't have to go read the manual to figure out what they do. It has uh, both a balanced, uh, Excel, balanced. Uh, it has an XLR um, connection, four pin XLR for balanced headphones and a quarter inch. Um, in many products, the uh, balanced XLR output actually has four times the power uh, of the uh, quarter inch, um, but not in this case, they're actually the same power. Uh, but the company claims there's a little bit of uh, magic in here where if you use the XLR, uh, output, it's able to sense uh, its feedback uh, through this uh, connection and, and uh, theoretically compensate for uh, um, the issues related to the loading that the headphone provides. Uh, we'll uh, test for that, uh, at least in a direct way. Um, other than that, not much else to talk about. I like the look of uh, the product. It's very sturdy. Uh, it's only $219, which is uh, quite low cost for a metal case. and. Uh, you know, this level of uh, configuration, but let's see how it performs. Um, for all the testing, I use the XLR input over here. Uh, I didn't bother testing the preamp outputs because they're usually the same as the headphone output with just a resistor in series. I think the company says they're 75 ohm output. So you could imagine everything I'm showing you would be representative of the uh, uh, preamp output as well. So I started with quarter inch output and feeding the amp um, four volts. It has a nice uh, unity gain mode, which means that uh, the amp doesn't amplify anything then you could use the volume control to lower the output. So I give it four volts and I set the volume to max and I get four volts out, which is nice. And this is the performance that we get. Distortion products are below minus 120 dBs, which means that you're guaranteed to not hear them. And, but there's a bit of noise that degrades that down to 118. Um, switching to uh, XLR output, uh, performance doesn't change, it's exactly the same company says that you have to have a real headphone load, so maybe with that would make a difference. I don't know. I don't think they have measurements to show either a difference. So at least in this, on a bench test, there's no difference between the two. But to be on the safe side, all the rest of the measurements that you see are with the XLR output tab. Uh, plotting where this combination of noise and distortion as expressed in Synad lands. Uh, it goes in here, best case uh, devices are at 121 dB, we're at minus, uh, we're at 118. So about three dB short of state of the art. So not, not bad at all. And as I mentioned, you basically have transparency on, on this thing anyway. Um, just measuring noise by itself rather than combination of noise and distortion. We see that we get 123 dB, which is better than 20 bits. Uh, so guaranteed transparency as far as noise level, if you're listening with this uh, uh, insensitive headphone. Uh, but if you have an ultra sensitive IEM, I also measure with just 50 millivolts up instead of four volts, so much lower output level. There, it really stresses the, uh, the amplifier and we get a number about 88, 89 dB. Um, you can't read this graph on the video, but best case is by 94 dB, we're at 88, 89. So again, near the top of the class, but not quite. To get to the top of the class, you need to have a headphone amp with negative gain, so it actually de-amplifies even at max volume, and that'll get you 3 dB or so. So if the company wants to compete in this game, they should uh, include a third gain setting that's, that's even lower amplification when with lower amplification noise level goes down. Um, back to distortion, instead of just one kilohertz that we've measured so far, we can measure with 32 tones that go from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And we see that distortion, the intermodulation products are way down here below minus 120 dB. So again, full transparency across the full spectrum. 
We can also measure one frequency at a time and we get essentially the same thing. The numbers are a little bit lower because we're measuring across 90 kilohertz bandwidth, so way past audible band and it's still extremely good and basically doesn't care what frequency you feed it. Same with frequency response, you know, as I measure from 10 hertz to 100 kilohertz and it's basically ruler flat across that full spectrum. So, you know, you could uh, use this to magnify, to amplify AM radio if you want. <laughs> it's a quite wide band and good. A state of the art preamps to, uh, and headphone amps tend to be this good, but just know that there is no tonality to this amp. It's as transparent as far as tonality is concerned as, as you can possibly get uh, way past audible band. Um, this amplifier, like many of it, uh, like it, has an analog uh, volume control. And analog volume controls start to lose accuracy at the lowest settings. Company uses a nice uh, pod from Alps, and then, uh, the, I don't know if they're doing their own pre-screening to find the good ones, but the sample that I have has extremely good channel balance. This dash blue line is a difference between the two channels as I literally grab the tone, con uh, the volume control for max, and I manually turn it to zero. And as I'm turning it, the analyzer's determining how much uh, uh, attenuation I'm getting with this red line and also what the channel difference is. And I measure 0.5 dB as when it uh, is unacceptable. And you can see until you get to this point uh, here, uh, channel matching is well below half a dB. And as soon as you go there, it jumps to one dB error. But at this point, if we go over here, we see that it's 60 decibels or 65 decibels of attenuation, which is plenty. So I don't think you're gonna hear channel imbalance uh, issue uh, with sensitive IEMs and sensitive headphones. Uh, or if you have sensitive ears and listen to very low volumes. But uh, there's a bit of a luck of a draw in here in that, uh, you know, they reach in a bin of parts and put them in there and some may be worse than this product, I don't know. Uh, without testing like 50 of them, you'll never know. But this is a good indicator that uh, channel balance is very good. Perhaps the most important thing in a headphone amplifier as far as measurement is how much power it has. Because once you run out of power, like here, and you start clipping, Distortion gets so bad that uh, the amp becomes unusable. I don't care if you're subjectivist or objectivist. Once the thing gets so distorted, everybody can hear it. So you want as much power as you can get. And it's very difficult to get power with high impedance. So this first test is with a 300 ohm load. Uh, that means you need to have a lot of voltage to get power. And this amp gets nearly three quarters of a watt, a little bit more than three quarters of a watt in my measurements. And uh, its own spec is only 750, so we're actually beating its spec. And my threshold is about 100 milliamps. So as soon as you have 100 milliamps, you have a capable, uh, I mean, sorry, milliwatts, uh, you have a capable headphone amp. Uh, and here we have seven or eight times that. So that means that even if you have a high impedance headphone, let's say it's a 600 ohm headphone, where you get uh, less power, you should still have ample amount of power drive capability, drive basically any high impedance headphone, uh, just about. There's some crazy headphones out there that require a speaker amps to drive them. But uh, putting that aside, you're basically future-proofed uh, in high impedance. At low impedance, it, uh, um, it still has an excellent amount of power, four and a half watts or so, and it gets a little bit more distorted and one channel gets more distorted than the other, uh, but still, this is extremely good. Uh, to have more than one or two watts is what I like to see, and we're, we're into four to five watts. Um, but those are two uh, loads. Uh, what happens with other loads? Well, if you have a headphone that has a 50 ohm uh, um, impedance, what do you get? So I run this test where I start at 600 ohm and step all the way down to just 12 ohm. Uh, there are IEMs that actually go as low as 8 ohm. So and depending on what headphone you have, you can look at it and find the nearest value and look at the graphs in here. Uh, basically, at uh, 600 and 300 ohm performance is the same. It uh, doesn't really care. But once you go below that, it starts to lose uh, voltage and progressively loses a little bit more, a little bit more. So when it loses voltage, um, you know, you have less capable uh, headphone amp. And then below that, some interesting happens, which I haven't seen, is that it actually shuts down the protection circuit and it doesn't let it uh, uh, produce more power at the, 20 ohm and below, 
uh, it actually limits you to this. But since the impedance is very low, you actually get quite a bit of power. But just know that this is an amp that's much happier driving uh, yeah, extremely high impedance loads, a little bit less happy driving low impedance. But even in that, we see the distortions are all at minus 95, minus 100 dB, so quite capable in here. Again, just a hair away from perfection. So how does it sound? I actually test every headphone amp, do a listening test. Why do I do a listening test? Because it's, with special test clips that I have, it's actually easy to determine when an amp is getting distorted. Basically, the sound gets very distorted, crackling, some amps mute. So I want to listen to that and, and get a you know, first-hand experience rather than doing psychoacoustics analysis at all power levels. So for testing, I start usually with these uh, Dan Clark, Dan Clark uh, Stealth headphones. It's a quite expensive $4,000 headphones. Um, beside their power, uh, their cost, they're also extremely power hungry. And one of the least sensitive headphones that I've tested, they're also very low impedance, I think down 32 ohm. So for this amplifier, this is very, very stressful kind of headphone. But uh, the uh, Midgard had no trouble driving it. I had to crank it all the way to 3 p.m., so maybe just you know a quarter of a turn left uh, as far as headroom. And beyond that, it got distorted. But at that level, it was incredibly loud, and I could hear my earlobes resonate with bass frequencies. No, I don't do that for more than one or two seconds, so don't worry about my hearing. Um, but I do crank it up just to see where that limit. Beyond that, it got really, really distorted. But you wouldn't continuously listen even at that 3 p.m., you know, so I did bulk of my listening after that around, I don't know, one or two o'clock in high gain, and it was just incredibly powerful and, and very good sound, just not infinite amount of power. But if you switch to the Sennheiser um, HD650s or all these clones and variations, this is a 300 ohm impedance uh, headphone, so opposite of the Dan Clark, and an order of magnitude more sensitive than the Dan Clark. With these at 12 o'clock, there was just bass that you would not believe. The detail was superb. Fidelity was just fantastic. Uh, was it more fantastic than many of the other amps I've tested? No. But it's just, you know, with the right content, with that slow distortion and clean recording, it's just amazingly a good sound. I just wanted to sit there and keep listening. Um, I did test with both of them, the XLR versus the quarter range. With the Dan Clark, I thought that essentially the same, but maybe the, the XLR was just a hair or less good. With the uh, HT650, I thought the XLR sounded a little bit better. But those kinds of differences are so fleeting and so small that it could just be a function of my sight at testing. And it takes about you know a few seconds to switch from one to the other. By the time you do that, your memory is long gone. You need to be able to do instantaneous A-B to be able to find small differences. So really, there's just nothing there to worry about. You know, Just use whatever connection is convenient uh, for you. So what's the bottom line is that it's a superbly powerful and transparent uh, headphone amp the Midgard is. Um, and it's priced to compete at the same level that you get from uh, products from Far East. As one of few companies that's able to keep up with, the, with those manufacturers and produce now extremely well measuring, well performing objectively and subjectively products with good construction yet bargain prices. $219, especially in this day and age with inflation and everything, it's not much money. So uh, it's just amazing that the, they can keep up and, and make a living uh, uh, selling product. Um, as usual, I always recommend getting balanced products, and this one has balanced XLR inputs, which is what's important. You don't really need balanced XLR output if you have enough power, which this one has. And what that gives you is incredible amount of noise immunity with respect to uh, ground loops. And once you've had a grand loop, you, you'll, you'll hate that forever. Uh, use balance stacks with this. They're very low cost balance stacks from Shet that matches that or some other one up to you. But if you're really into computer audio, it's just you're asking for, for trouble but using unbalanced stuff. Spend an extra $50, $100 for the amp versus the, uh, and the DAC and get yourself balanced uh, IO and, and you're in business.
Okay, so great products, uh, definitely recommend it. And uh, if you're in the US, you enjoy buying locally. Uh, distribution overseas is not as good, so I don't know how good of a fit it is if you're outside of the US, but in the US, it's, it's, a, it's a great choice. Okay, see you in a future video. Bye-bye.